Hello, my soccer universe. Yes, I'm wearing an Austria jersey. Um, I actually would have liked to wear this Denmark jersey, but Denmark now is uh, flying high, and my Denmark jersey that I ordered still has, has, hasn't arrived, although I ordered it well before the Euros. So, there you go. Austria. Yes, I'm Austrian. Yes, congratulations, Austria. Um, not all that excited. I might be one of the few Austrians that actually will more root for Italy in the next round than actually Austria. Um, I have made a video about it. Uh, I have a really hard time. Uh, we will keep our manager. In all fairness, and I will say more on that game, I actually think they played more to the style that I would expect this Austria team to play at least for the first half. Uh, you, you could see that actually this is a team that could perform really, 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 really well and even could give a bigger team a little bit of run for their money. But more on that. Uh, as I said, Denmark, I think we don't need to discuss. I think the emotional heart of this Euro tournament is Copenhagen especially with those Danish fans and all I feel is that um, this was a, for them a once in a lifetime chance to have a big tournament at home for a small country like Denmark and I was thinking yeah yes yes we already had the Euro but wouldn't it be nice to give a tournament to Scandinavia to have games in Copenhagen in Stockholm um, Helsinki Oslo or whatever I, it, it was just great. It was just great. Um, since we had a lot of games and we also need to discuss, um, I expect this to be a longer video, so um, I would say let's go right to it. I mean, the good thing is that there were always two games that I, a, I, I only saw highlights and B that we can hopefully talk rather shortish. And we'll start with North Macedonia against the Netherlands because that was the true dead robber. Uh, the Dutch running out uh, uh, easy winners. However, it was all about Goran Pandev, who at the beginning of the game was even presented by the Netherlands with a Dutch jersey with the number of uh, caps that he had. So I thought that was a really, really nice um, move. And then North Macedonia actually started out well, had a big chance. I think a goal was disallowed and then they hit once the post. Um, and then the deciding game of uh, the deciding scene of the game. And the 24th, Goran Pandas is fouled uh, at the opposition box. And then a very quick counter-attack uh, where Marlon then uh, serves that by make it 1-0 for the Dutch. Both teams playing in their away jerseys. Uh, I actually thought the Dutch would play in red, but uh, in black, but I expected the North Macedonia to play in red. So uh, that was curious, but I was happy because I have the North Macedonia shirt. Maybe I should have worn North Macedonia for this video. Second half, uh, Gini Van Aldom, um, twice assisted by Depay, just needs to make two tap-ins. And then I think a scene of the game, death, definitely when Goran Pandev came off and all the uh, teammates made a guard of honor for him coming off. Last game, um, yeah, it was great for him to uh, at least experience this in a Euros tournament and he got his goal, so yeah, against Austria um, and that was it. Um, I think the North Macedonians didn't disgrace themselves at all in this, tour in this tournament, but clearly they were a little bit out of their depth. Moving on over to Bucharest, uh, where Austria won 1-0 against the Ukraine. Um, and if you see the, well, the, my summary, there was only one event of note, which was the goal. But that's a little bit too much. Uh, I actually would like, and but you know, I, I lack a little, a little bit of time to do that. Uh, to have you know, put chances in there as well, because that that would give you a much better idea of the game. Also, would be a nice uh, aid for me. But yeah, whatever. Uh, I think Austria played really, really well. They had almost this Christmas tree formation with four at the back, uh, so not three, uh, which actually they are much more used to. And then you have Alaba out left. I think this is how Austria should in most of the time play. And then the midfield Leimer, Schlager, Grilic, uh, pressing machines and Baumgartner saw, saw with a similar front. And you have Arnautovic, who, yeah, he can provide the extra spark, but he was not doing much yesterday, to be honest. Um, but I really liked how Austria was pressing high. And I think for this Austrian team, the higher they can press, 
The closer they make the press to the opposition goal, the more dangerous this uh, team is. The further away it goes, then there's always the chance of losing a little, a little bit of ball. Those are pressing machines. They need to attack, attack, attack up front uh, and hope for a lock, a bounce that it can, can come in. You take away a lot of the strength of this team by not having them do the counter press up front, but by waiting and falling back. We'll look forward to, to that. But uh, this was at least a, in baby steps visible in this uh, game. And Ukraine had a really, really hard time getting in, in, in into the game. I think that one thing, they had dangerous attack around the fourth minute. But other than that, it was all Austria where, um, yeah, converting the chances is, 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 is a big problem. The goal by Baumgart now was a funny one because it was a corner kick from Alaba. And he with the bottom of, of, of his foot guard is over the line. Wound call is a big goal score, goal scoring chance, but they came actually then uh, before that already. I think there was a header, uh, and then especially before they have Arnautovic with two really good chances. At least one of those he has has to make another one where I think it's Sabitzer who is uh, assisting him. Savica has to play the ball sooner than Arnautovic has a little, a little bit more time. But for someone who, uh, you know, I don't want to be too critical because Arnautovic has been carrying this team um, pre-Corona for at least two or three years. He was by far the best player that Austria had. Uh, so uh, any criticism on, on him is un unfair. But I have to say, um, he has this kind of... Uh, he knows that he's the he's probably the most talented player uh, bar Alaba on this team. <laughs> he kind of carries himself that way and um, a little bit too much nonchalantness in him. Uh, if he will take it something a little bit more serious, I think uh, you would have a true world-class player in there as well. Um, but albeit, you know, it's also his character in a way. So I think first half was Austria really well. I think the only thing I can blame them for is uh, they didn't convert their chances. Second half, again, uh, yes, Austria was still with a lot of confidence and Ukraine's confidence was shot. And especially uh, taking off the Mal Malinovsky and Shaparenko in a way, uh, completely destroyed their game in many ways. Um, but what I did not like is that Austria was starting to fall further back. And even in the interview after the games, I think um, Grilich said, uh, honestly, we should have gone for the second goal because uh, we would have saved ourselves um, a little bit more, uh, yeah, uh, some nerves uh, do, do, doing so because the goal is all, 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 always in there. However, um, except for an almost own goal by Lina that the goalkeeper nicely saved and uh, a shot from far, far out by, I think, Yaremchuk. There was really nothing that Ukraine could muster despite all the support. Um, I was actually a little bit disappointed and you know this also speaks that this Austrian team yet yeah, they wanted to get through because this was the goal. However, you know, I'm always thinking a little bit further. If you would finish third and to be honest, if you get the draw here, you would already be qualified with the way the games went because you would be ahead of Switzerland. If you get the draw here, you're in third spot. Uh, there is a pretty good chance that you play against the first place team from group e where there's even a, a decent chance that you not play spain and even that would not be the bad but you would play sweden which uh, similar to ukraine now finishing second yes you achieve your goal you qualify but you play against italy yes it's a dream matchup you play against italy which is one of the marquee teams of this tournament you play at Wembley, that is all great, but you're going home after four games. So, um, for me, there's a little bit, so being smart, smart about it, I also think that Ukraine, um, probably they will qualify, um, as we will see. I felt a little bit for, for them, because I think for the first three halves in this tournament, Ukraine was playing actually quite, quite well. Yesterday, I don't know, I think first, the press of Austria was really giving them trouble and then they could not recover. And But also, you know, you could play against the press a little bit better. In any case, Austria going through for sure at the moment. Let's move on to group uh, B because group B, that was 
just that, that that was just special that was just special uh, and i want to start with finland belgium i know i should do it concurrently but let's do finland belgium um credit to belgium they could have rested a few players they played all out yes if they would have lost to finland they would have lost first place but they were already qualified so about playing De Bruyne, playing Lukaku, and playing Eden Azar, uh, so full on. Finland's tactic clearly was hang back, keep it tight, don't concede, nil nil, and we're most likely through. Unless Russia does something against Denmark, but I think not many would have expected that. Uh, so it became a war of attrition, and Belgium, despite playing the first squad, I think maybe did not play full on however they had chances and chances and chances and chances so we didn't do not talk about it um one crucial one was that uh lukaku uh, lukaku on the 65th was uh he was just with his toe basically offside yeah i i do not like this either but you know rule is the rule so okay but uh i you could not until they magnified this i could not see that lukaku was offside I'm gonna be frank about that, uh, which caused all kinds of trouble in uh, Denmark over, but we'll talk about that when it's there. But then uh, Belgium finally breaks off Finland in the most, uh, you know, comically fashions. A Vermaelen shot hits the post and it comes out in such, in such a way that Radetzky who had, had great saves up until that point. It touches him on, on, on his hand and just bounces in. It looks ridiculous, but you, uh, you cannot do much. This is just so fast, you cannot do much there. Uh, it just looks ridiculous. And Radetzky has this in him. I think he's a great goalkeeper, but he also has those uh, really odd slapstick moments in him. And then Lukaku says, okay, I need to make another goal. 2-0. Belgium wins and wins the group. Finland uh, now on the edge of course and then we go we have to go over to Copenhagen I said it all, all, already beginning the atmosphere there was just electric um, this was amazing the national anthems I think there was it reminded me a little bit about the World Cup in uh, Brazil you know with the Brazilian team a lot of emotion riding high and I think it got at the beginning a little bit to, to, to this Danish team who um, I really they're not playing the typical Danish style anymore. Kaspar Hjalmund really has um, transformed this also in a very aggressive, very pressing side. Also one that always goes forward. And that's why I have always been riding high on Denmark. And I think circumstance um, really prevented them to be better. I mean, you saw already against Belgium that this Denmark team is really, 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 really good. And so while I have loads of sympathies for Finland, I think it would have been an amazing story if Finland makes it through. Um, given what had happened to Denmark and given that Denmark is a really good team, not Italy great, but I think they could give a hard game to any big team in this tournament. Um, it just felt to me fair that Denmark will go through here. I, I actually was really hoping for Denmark and not necessarily for Finland because Denmark is a team that can really ignite this tournament. They, uh, they, they have that potential, maybe up front a little bit lightweight. Uh, but you know, we'll see about that. However, I, I think they had an initial period of like 10, 10 minutes where they really tried, tried to go for it, but then Russia could absorb them very well and held actually tight. And I had the feeling it was even the slightly more dangerous team. Uh, I think that the pressure really got to them and Russia knew that, um, you know, a draw, just enough for us. And that's kind of a way we just need to uh, frustrate the Danes a teeny bit, which they actually did. And it was only then late in the second, uh, in the first half. Oh, why do I always say? Can't confuse that. That uh, Denmark got the breakthrough through a wonderful goal by Damsgaard. Um, wonderful, nicely curled shot outside, really dips just on, on, on the bar. Wonderful piece of skill. Uh, at that point, Denmark had a few chances, but nothing really that convincing. And so, yeah, that was uh, basically the first big one. Uh, for Denmark, uh, where Russia actually, actually with, if they a little bit bit smart, they could have already scored there. Actually, did you also find it a little bit funny that Russia was the home team in that, in that one? There was uh, barely any Russian fan there. Second half, uh, it was clear that if, uh, I think with the 1-0, Denmark would 
uh, already have been on a good path because uh, you know one nil win uh, Russia won against Finland one nil win Finland against Denmark one nil and then it kind of comes down how much do you lose against Belgium and uh, Denmark only lost by one goal so that would have all been fine but the problem is that at this point still Finland was nil nil um, and then everything kind of uh, starts uh, start with a, a really a harsh tackle by Kudryashov. Uh, I think I'm getting this right now. Uh, I want to say so. Uh, where he should have gotten a second yellow card. From the ensuing free frigate, there was not a really big chance, but then uh, just a few ma mo mo moments later, uh, a really, really uh, horrible back pass. I think Zob uh, Zobnim, who wanted to find Safonov. But, Saf, uh, but he played it across the goal and that not no, 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 not the side of goal Safonov was, was playing. Directly in the path of Paulsen, who uh, just composes him himself, makes it 2-0. At that moment, really all hell broke loose. Because you knew with 2-0, Denmark is now for sure ahead of Russia. Uh, and would even win a three-way um, three, uh, tie. Uh, without having any conquer con competition and relying on how much Belgium will win over Finland. Um, however, Belgium and Finland were still at nil-nil and then uh, it was such a funny scene and uh, absolutely crazy. It was a ra uh, it was the non-given goal by Lou Kako where, uh, in the 65th, 66th minute. And this was probably, this is where the most emotional stuff, although uh, it all went against Dan the Denmark. The game was rather, rather quiet, and suddenly I hear in the commentator uh, some Danish uh, yelling, door, 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 so goal, goal, goal. And then suddenly you hear this, um, the whole stadium is getting infected, and all of them are, ce uh, are celebrating. And uh, even though I think it was Breathwaite who was kind of saying, no, no, slow, da, 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 everyone going berserk, but the goal was being checked. And after a really long check, because of this marginal offside, suddenly uh, everything turns against Denmark. You first had the yellow red not given for Kudryashov, which on, on, on the shoulders should have been. Then this goal is taken uh, back, and then uh, referee Tupin gifts Russia a penalty. It was never a foul of Krieg, of Krieg, of Christensen, uh, but penalty is given, and I know. Because it was not clear and obvious, uh, VAR did not in in interfere, but it was ridiculous. Zuba steps up, penalty. It is 1-2. That must have been very deflating for Denmark. However, uh, for some reason they hung in there. Now, uh, it was clearly had, and now here it's very important to keep the timeline uh, in place. And for me it was actually harder to follow there because with a huge thunderstorm that actually blocked out my TV picture from the satellite. So I had to watch them on my phone. And you know, until every, everything, so I was missing a little bit. But um, Belgium gets then the leading goal, the, the, the goal to go ahead. Uh, at that point, um, it is still Denmark then uh, ahead. However, it is very, very tight. And then Denmark having many chances, they get the second, they get kind of this lift. And there was a crazy scene where I think it was uh, Braithwaite having a chance. Then the ball uh, is recovered, it falls to Kier, uh, is blocked, and th then the ball comes to Christensen, which with one of the most satisfying shots that you'll ever see, makes it 3-1 Denmark, and then just three minutes later, Mele uh, with, with a counter 4-1, and it probably could have been uh, even worse for Russia at that point. Denmark just running riot, typically Danish dynamite right there and Denmark with only three points hangs on to 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 the win and they really want to because they knew that uh, Be Be Belgium is leading to to nil but you can see they are uh, congregating a center circle and really waiting that the result is confirmed and the big uh, big sets of celebrations where you just you know you had to back off this was just such an amazing atmosphere and I think Denmark is now everyone's darling team in many ways because of what happened to Ericsson but I also have to say it is really easy to like them because they're a really good team to watch a really good team to watch and yeah I was also happy that they moved on I think if you're from Russia or Finland, of course, yeah, I understand. But uh, other, other than that, it was really fun to see what happened. So, 
Let's cool it down a little bit. Uh, here are the results from the four games. We have Austria winning against UAE, Netherlands against um, North Macedonia, then Belgium 2-0 against Finland. And so with this we get the following group standings with Belgium uh, through with a perfect record. Um, and as I said, uh, Denmark, the first team to uh, only come through, at, at years at least, with three points in the group stage, but you know, head to head and every, everything working out in their favor. Um, in the other game, we have uh, other group, we have Austria now ahead of Ukraine, uh, or also through through the next round, but you also see Finland and Ukraine have very different paths moving forward. Uh, Ukraine actually with three points and minus one not being that bad, um, whereas Finland has only a 10% chance to actually qualify. Uh, all these results also meant that the Czech Republic and England are already qualified. Uh, as is Sweden and France. So uh, all that triggered a whole lot of happy uh, faces all around. Uh, we have also uh, now in the third place team Switzerland, as I said, is through um, because they have already Ukraine and Finland behind them. Um, and then again, we have to see Portugal, Spain and Croatia. We'll see this in the next two days, how this will develop. Um, but let's look at the projections. As I said, for the first three groups, nothing much to project. We know how they, they, they will finish. Uh, again, Ukraine, 65% chance of moving on. Finland, only a 10% chance at this moment. Um, England, Czech Republic, that uh, is the order that we will, will expect. They will play um, this evening. And for the other third place teams, it is Portugal, Switzerland, Slovakia, Ukraine that I will project so far to go in. Finland and Croatia a little bit on the outside looking in. With all that, the expected bracket, slight changes. Now Italy playing against Austria. Uh, we have Belgium and Slovakia now because the uh, third place team uh, from group um, B is kind of a goner in many ways. Sweden against Ukraine, a very interesting color matchup coming there for sure. Um, and uh, we have Wales against Denmark already confirmed. Netherlands might play against Portugal. They will not like that at all. So the confirmed spots are Belgium will play a third place team. According to my projection, Slovakia. We have Italy against Austria already. Um, we have the Netherlands against the third place team, likely Portugal, and then Wales against Denmark. And I think Denmark will like their chances going forward there. And I could actually see them carry maybe up until the semi final if it really was Portugal or the Netherlands that they are playing. As for overall chances, we have Belgium, France, England, and Italy. The top four remain the same. However, now Belgium uh, lost a little bit of chances, as did Italy, because they're now on a crash course. Not that great. Spain actually getting a little bit of lift up there. Um, Netherlands uh, falling a little bit back. Uh, find that uh, curious Denmark, because they're through now move ahead of Germany. Austria playing against Italy, only a small chance of advancing, so they're only in 15th spot. As for tonight, we have actually um, only two games and they're all at nine. We have Croatia against Scotland and Czech Republic against England. I will probably rely on what the TV stations will choose. I honestly think that Croatia Scotland is probably the slightly more interesting one, although England, because England, you know, uh, although I think England should win their group, and take the bit, a bit, a bit of pill, but at least you stay in, in Wembley. And if you get over that, you reach the quarter well, quarterfinals, but I guess um, being eliminated in the round the round 16 is a harsher result than being eliminated in the quarterfinals. So maybe that's where it goes in. You know, I'm always lo looking forward. I think a bigger chance for winning for England will, prob will probably be if you stay in that uh, in first spot. Um, however, Croatia, Scotland, we have to see. The interesting thing is the Scottish player tested COVID positive, but however, since he, Gilmore, since he's playing for Chelsea and Mount uh, had close contact with him, uh, the England squad had two players, so I, I isolated not the Scottish squad, which I find a little bit crazy. But yeah, uh, could be an interesting group uh, finale, but I'm not sure actually which is the better game to pick. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and yeah, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday and what happened, what will happen today and I will talk to you soon. Bye.
Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.